Hello and welcome to Technology Simplicity YouTube channel. My name is Jay Chung. Today is in episode 38. We are going to talk about user experience. And some of you actually might thought, okay, I thought user experience is something like design, the logo, the button, set colors. And many of you actually thought it's like a designer. In today's topic, I'm going to clarify what is user experience. That's number one. And number two is I'm going to share with you what does user experience really do and what are the tools that you can use. Let's say if you're not an expert, but you actually try to practice user experience and design a customer or user journey for your product or as well as anything from your website, to e-commerce site, to your anything at all. So let's go. Well, so let's talk about user experience, okay? User experience, okay? The reason I put this logo, not because I'm just restricted myself to these three tools, but actually I'm going to share with you what is UX versus UI as well as user flow analytics, okay? Let me go through through with you. Before that, when it comes to user experience, um, we talk about the best thing is near to instance response. So when it comes to social media, um, in my other videos that I shared in my channel previously, I already, give me one second. Okay, I already shared that how to automate your social media like a king, okay? So if you go and refer that, then you will realize what is Jaguar chat and how to actually use it to automate your social media. In this, episode and this way i'm going to give away it's the same thing okay which is the lifetime access for you okay stay tuned in my social media and let's carry on about user experience okay first of all discriminator same thing okay the presentation of this talk show is about education purpose only i'm not going to replace any independent professional judgment okay and when it comes to these slides, which I'm going to share in the video description, okay, you can click on it. Then while you're browsing the same slide, whenever you see these three, you know, animated and something like that, which means it's clickable, okay? Because previously there are some of the audience asked me about, okay, whether the slide can be clicked or not. Okay, now, now I'm going to show you these other legends. Okay, so let's carry on. Before this, um, this is... I know this is sounds like a uh, you know looks like a picture with normal things, but I wanted to tell you when it comes to design, yes, definitely the glass is so good, you know, greenery. Um I'm not saying this is the perfect design. I'm just saying that when it comes to design, it's about what is looking good visually, right? But when it comes to user experience, it's about how your user actually achieve the objective from something that you actually try and create it. For example, you are trying to go from here, from the bottom, okay, bottom here, and go to the opposite, whereby there's a lady coming forward. So in that's a user experience, you know, the user might choose the shortest path, whereby I just straight away course, rather than go with a round, okay? So this is what we call user experience, because you actually design something for the user in convenience, you know, in terms of what they really want okay other than just visually look stunning by the way i'm not saying that this is the perfect example of user experience and i'm not saying also user experience can be this ugly yeah okay i know this path is ugly okay let's move on okay so when it comes to user experience um i i know that i've been covered a little bit in a previous picture just now um however allow me to put it this way when it comes to user experience it's about economics um standards it's about human system interactions okay human system interactions okay and it's involving a lot of stuff including you know emotions belief preference perceptions physical psychological response behavior as well as accomplishments that occur during before or after yeah this is according to the iso uh, 9241 
Okay, when it comes to uh, like uh, ISO nine two four one is about yes, economics or human system interaction. Huh? Okay, I know it sounds like okay, this is this is too much for you or anything. Bear with me. Okay. You know my style, right? Okay, but before that, let me show you one more picture, then you will get why user experience is actually very critical. Okay, you look at the left hand side, the cup looks cute, right? Yeah, with the rapid, I'm not sure it's a rapid or, or shit, okay? Correct me if I'm wrong, but this looks cute, right? From the design wise, the cup is cool. Yeah, it's, it looks cute, and the coloring, everything is fine, but put in experience means usability <laughs> this is what happened on the right hand side so what i'm trying to say um here is the design is visually looking good user experience is when you try to use it to achieve a certain purpose then you will realize whether it makes sense or not so ux is like that okay now you get the better idea if yes, let me give you these so-called informal definitions. One more time about a path. Okay, maybe the previous one might not be that obvious. Give you this. Let's say you're coming from A. Okay, you want to walk to B. So in terms of design, you know, architect wise, okay, you you draw a very straight line and then with a junction, then you go to left, you know. Looking good, right? The walking path. Yeah, it looks cool. Okay. But when it comes to user experience, we all want what? shortest path even when you're driving even you are walking so when it comes to user experience this is what people choose this is what people want this is their preference so when it comes to user experience you need to design something what people really want okay now you clear it using informal definition plus the so-called formal definition now you clear okay let's move forward okay so how it works actually according to the iso tuna uh 9241 if i'm not mistaken okay correct me if i'm wrong as well there are actually 20 parts for you to actually fulfill before you say this thing have been clear um audited via user experience um aspects <laughs> there are 20 things okay pretty simple <clears throat> it's about task requirement okay it's about visual it's about keyboard it's about posture it's about environment it's about display it's about colors it's about input it's about dialogue dialogue is like conversations right okay sometimes it's like instruction okay then when it comes to usability remember the the cup mimi just now <laughs> okay then it's about information okay it's about guidance it's about a menu dialogue okay it's about a command it's about a manipulation the feeling okay the the form filing sorry and accessibility so there are 20 parts okay the first one is introduction that's it okay let me dig in deeper but in a simple way to 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 actually explain what is ux huh? when it comes to design or you um, design is this part but for ux it's about accessibility the interface the navigation the usability the structuring the human computer interaction hci human human computer interactions okay as far as user research when we come to talk about user research it's actually much more like um i'm not sure you agree with me it's as simple as um everyone using your devices like mobile phone is unique way you agree or not all of us using our mobile phone in our very unique way there's no one using it in the same way you agree okay if you agree that is what it's about let's say you try to design a button okay to fulfill certain group of people you need to study how they actually use something then only you can give them what they want okay so that's user research okay let's carry on so up to this point i wanted to say that um user experience not equal to user interface okay can can agree yeah i know this is debatable some say that um ui is subset of ux or something like that but for me this is two different things okay this picture actually quite clear in terms of what is ux it's about interaction it's about 
of typing, it's about information architect, it's about user research and scenarios. Whereby, on the other hand, right hand side here is user interface is more like a visual design, colors, graphics, layouts, typography, which is basically everything about visual. Okay, now you're clear. Okay, if you disagree, always put in the comment box and then let's discuss. Then let me show you one more example as well as just for love. Eh? When you look at the left hand side, yes, the four, you know, animals looks cool, right? And the parents feel like um, this is helpful for the baby. But put it this way, if you put yourself in the baby perspective, the baby is actually looking like this. Do you realize this or not? This, this is all about when we look look things from different angle and perspective, we shall see a different thing. We talk about that every day in our adult adulthood life we talk about philosophy and that but when it comes to a simple design sometimes we forgot about this also so i hope this picture also gives you much more clearer picture about what is user experience as in you actually look at the things enjoy the product service or try out the stuff from the user perspective not from the design perspective okay okay let's carry on so when it comes to user experience design, please look carefully on the title. It's a UX design process, which means how you actually carry carry out the user experience process. Okay. For this is something I found it's very cool. There are five steps, just like our project management, just like um just like nowadays the coding uh, mobile apps, you know, how they do it, the the cycle. Okay, number one, you research, you need to meet the user understand how to use it sometimes even though you feel like this is so easy but your real user might don't feel the same okay please understand that okay number two be empathize your user okay be the user sometimes your user complain they don't understand they don't know how to use don't judge them they don't understand means they don't understand as simple as that okay just like when it comes to education, some kids just don't understand, so the teacher have to find another way to teach and deliver the message. Just like in our adulthood, you know, when we talk to another person, and then your friend might say, I just don't understand. Yes, it's fine. You do understand means you do understand, okay? So be empathized, be the user, and try to understand them. Okay, then number three is create. You want to make it simple, okay? Um you try to create something like using a minimum effort to showcase what you're trying to do okay then number four is you test it out once you create the simplest prototype or something like that then you share to the to the sample user that you want to engage and so on then ask them to give you feedback and from there you know the data don't lie okay whether they like it or not whether it's functional or not whether whether for example you want to design a, a e-commerce website that people actually can purchase thing within five minutes test it out okay lastly develop it stick to the design that you actually propose and yeah simple huh? okay let's carry on so the whole process is um I'll give you one scenario let's say you come try to come out this um mobile apps so at first place you talk about app structure you talk about functionality you talk about user journey you know when it comes to user journey allow me to elaborate more as in you need to imagine yourself when first day you you look at these apps from the app store you install it what's the first thing you want to see when you open the apps for the very first time think about that imagine yourself just like a user who never know about anything about your apps then you can design a great journey from there you know step one what i should see whether a registered account or i should straight away see the content of the app then carry on then after day 15 30s 90s days after a certain period of time i use it what should i see also okay this is called user's journey and share empathy maps you know what's empathy maps is imagine a user will face a lot of challenge when trying to 
achieve something to the apps, to a website or anything, okay? Imagine yourself, what kind of challenge you might face from a user perspective, from point A to point B, point B to point C and so on. Remember just now the path? Try it yourself. Whether I walk here to that part, um, is it time is my concern? That I need the shortest path ever? Is it energy is my concern? I also need the shortest path. Is it visually looking good when I walk is a concern? You can think about that. Okay. Then when you've done your user research discovery and then you came out layout interaction design, do a lot of user testing. From there you will see a lot of good feedback. Then from there you re refine it. Okay, let's carry on. You know, the UX design is to tackle problems. So, um, as I mentioned just now, every single user has their own unique way to use a certain things in digital space, like mobile apps or website or anything, right? So, you might want to group them, okay? Other than you want to design something for 1 million users, you, you really want to go through 1, 000, 1 million scenario? No, really, right? You can group them in a similar one. That is how you create persona. For example, people like me who understand IT, I have experience as background in IT, and um, I wouldn't I wouldn't really give up so easily when I when I start in in actually finding a button or something. Okay, this is my character. So there could be another one just like me. Okay, so it could put it could be a uh, uh, persona A in this case then I put everyone like me with the same character probably within the same age okay you know 20 to 40 okay it's too much maybe uh, 25 to 35 okay something like that okay I accidentally reveal my age huh? okay now I come back here so you design a group of people that's similar in terms of their character their behavior then you actually figure out their problem for example, my problem is I can't read Japanese. Then let's say your app is designed for Japanese. How you actually tackle a problem if the person is not a Japanese who actually can't understand Japanese? That is just for example, okay? Then you came out the strategy, then you came out the objective, and you came out the feature. For example, your strategy is you split the apps into two versions. One is Japan version. Um, one is international, which is English version. That could be one strategy. But if resources is limited, you can't actually, you know, handle two apps. So why not your apps can switch language or probably just insert a few words, you know, stuff like that. Okay. Once you define the strategy, the objective and the features, for example, I just switch the language in the sidebar. Then you came out a solution. Then you test it out. Then you see whether the problem been tackled or not. This is how it usually works. Huh? Okay, let's carry on is just for love one more time. Okay. Yeah. This maybe I know it's just for love, but for me it's true. So you know, sometimes when I browse through certain website, um, you know, once in a while if the website actually have to pop up to actually ask you to subscribe to their newsletter, one time, yes, I'm fine. But imagine when you go to the website, the top down, um, the header, the, the header part suddenly came out, oh, okay, today's news. Then the footer suddenly came out, oh, today's news. Oh, then when you browse a few few seconds, they suddenly another pop up. Um, that is called call to actions. And when it's actually so many and with unnecessary, your user can't breathe. They feel suffocated and they feel crowded and they feel so busy and they just do want to focus on what they're trying to find anymore, then they will just leave. Get it? Okay, let's carry on. So, um, what are the tools out there for you to actually carry on your user experience design? Okay, and when it comes to user experience design, we use this uh, lean. Okay, when it comes to project management, there's um, not project management, uh, business model generations. There's one lean business model generation as well. So there are tools and there are three phases when it comes to UX design. Think, make, and check. Okay, think first, as in you research the user. 
how they actually do things. Then you try to map. Then you check whether it's correct or not. User user testing tools. So what are the things that are available? Okay, let me give you this very comprehensive research that I found. And by the way, sometimes okay, this Mimi also just for love, but at the same time give you another thought. Sometimes you thought a simple UI like this. It makes sense, right? You have three cats, so you make three bowls. Then each of them can, you know, it, it should be very neat. And then they will like queue up, right? But in the end, this is what happened. <laughs> this is why, regardless how well you plan, you still need to conduct testing because in, in reality, you, you might just don't know what will happen right? when it comes to real people. Sometimes people might change. Okay, so let's carry on. The thing phase, um, when it comes to user research, there are four things here you can be uh, con uh, conduct, interview, survey, persona creations, as well as in-house testing. So when it comes to these four parts, okay, if you see the highlighted here, user testing, this is something that um, the user testing is the one that I highlight in the logo in the poster. Why? Because out of all this, um, the most effective is you actually engage with real people who are stranger. Okay, that's why they give you unbiased feedback. So through the user testing platform, you can engage with real people and give you the real result. Uh, not real result, real feedbacks. So this is something very interesting other than tools uh, like Google Analytics uh, and so on. Okay, there are lots. Okay. Um, if you want to browse them, you can you can look for the video description where I compile all the whole list and just all the tools here. Okay, you can click on it. After the thing phase, okay, let me just for laugh one more time. Eh? Okay, when it comes to designer, you are here. When it comes to user experience designer, oops, um, you are here. When it comes to uh, I don't know how to pronounce this stuff. <laughs> Human empathy architecture. Yeah, it's like um. It's like before the person know this is something much more convenient to me, you already designed that for them. It's like they do know they need that and they do know they want that. But after you design, they feel like this is so comfortable and so cool. Something like that, huh? Right? Layman terms. Okay. Just for love as well. Let's carry on. Phase two is make. Means you design it in, in the minimum one. Okay, I'm not saying that you develop the whole thing came out first. My advice always came out a prototype before you came out the real product or the the real outcome. Okay. When it comes to this, um I did suggest um flow map and figma. Okay, um flow map is the one that in the poster, figma is the something that I feel like is really powerful. Uh I personally use it in many projects as well. So you gotta design you need a flow chart. Flow chart thing means you know, step one, step two, step three. Remember, uh, I mentioned about user journey. Um, user journey, yes. So it's like, imagine yourself in this scenario called first time exploring an app. Okay, this app. So what you should see, number one, number two, number three. Other than what you see is about, you need to write it down. So what they actually start to understand about what you're trying to solve whether the info information is sufficient up to, let's say, step three. This is actually how you provide the information flow. Okay, put it down using any of the flow uh, charting tools. Okay, but it's not limited to just three. Okay, there are many and thousand more. Tools that are listed down. Okay, uh, I wouldn't say the best, but at least something that I try and I personally recommend it. Okay. Then when it comes to wireframing, it's like you general basic visualization of the solutions. Okay, then last but not least, you create much more sophisticated uh, visualization of design of the solutions. Okay, which is quite close to the real mobile apps or, or real website or something like that. Okay, there are two. So this is phase two. And again, just for love, huh? okay, I know this is a bit biased to a certain brand, but it's true so right when it comes to chili uh chili sauce for example in a bottle majority in the 
in the market, what they sell you is the cap and the open is on the top. But all of us know that the TV source always go down. Always like sink at the bottom, right? So this is what happened when, if you look at the left side here, I'm sure you recall this experience, right? You hold the chili sauce bottle and then when you try to pull it out and you're like, oh, come on. When when you actually come out, you know? On the other hand, a certain brands actually, they create this way that your bottle always put it down whereby the open is at the bottom. So that way that you just open the cap and squeeze and it's out. So this is convenience. Okay guys, now now you get clearly picture about what's so important about user experience, right? And I'm sure you can recall what's the brand of the right hand side one, right? Yeah, I don't mention it because um <laughs> okay, I don't mention it. I don't I don't want to be biased, but it's true. Okay. So let's carry on the third phase as per the UX design process. Okay, the third phase is testing. So you need A B testing. Okay, as simple as you know, I created a button, left one, um, I want to try it out whether green color is much more attractive or blue color is much more attractive, for example. Okay, A B testing. Then I also have a heat map. I want to see how user actually really use my apps. Okay, I put Microsoft Credity and Mix Panel here. And I need to survey also. I need to get feedback. Okay, some feedback. Um tools out there is very intelligent whereby for example hot jar survey they allows you to i think it's survey or feedback i forgot the component huh? that allows you to point exactly on the website which part that you want to feedback and then i give i provide the comments okay last but not least there are session recording tools whereby each user that come to browse your apps or website or system you will record down their sessions Okay, when we say record now, I know it sounds creepy, but um, they are not revealing any sensitive information. For example, when you are typing password, it will record the password. In fact, they just recorded how how much time you spend, for example, on the login, then how you actually browse from home page to check out. That is session recording that can tell us. Okay, so that is third phase. And again, just for love, um <laughs> This is something for tools who actually uh, wanted to explore more in user experience. You know, I, um, this is something it happened to myself also when, when I try to browse around uh, for some contract, for some requirements. Some, you know, some told me you're like, okay, I need 20 years of <laughs> iOS design experience. <laughs> I'm sure you will laugh because it really good look. Okay. Those who do understand, let me explain a little bit. Eh? iOS just released on 20, 2007. And imagine this year is 2022. So how many years is this? Let me, let me do a calculation and I'm sorry about my math. <laughs> okay, it's 15 years, right? So imagine someone actually asks, oh, I need someone who have 20 years of iOS design experience. I'm sure you're laughing. Right? It's like, how is it possible? okay this is just for love uh. okay so wrap up i know this is empty right okay i'm going to update the slide after today's slide um today's live okay you can click on it which is leads to the all the tools i mentioned just now in the category form don't worry i'm going to put it there then yep that's all for user experience i hope you learned something today in terms of what is UX versus UI, and there are quite a numbers of user flow analytics and other tools for different aspects of user experience so far. And remember the giveaway I mentioned last episode that I won't do it live anymore. Please follow my social media so that you can win away the giveaway. But the question will be asked now. So um, before that, let me share with you the upcoming. And as I promised previously, all the next topics of Go Digital Live series will be decided by you. So go to this link. Yeah, it's clickable. Go to this link. You can either suggest a new topic or you can vote with the existing topic that you found interesting. Okay, go to there and then the latest vote result is someone suggested IT project management and achieving the highest rate. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so next week, 
on Digital Life series, Go Digital Life series episode 39, I'm going to be covering digital project management. So I will talk about methodology and I will talk a little bit about people management as well as I will covering a little bit on the tools that I've been used so far. Okay, there are quite a number of logos out there. <laughs> Okay, so that is the one. And remember, the giveaway and the questions will be Is Agile and Kanban is the same? Okay, the question is here. I'm going to release the giveaway in the social media so that you can participate. The first correct one, not in the live chat, uh, in the command, will be the winner. Okay, let's capture it and see. Next one. And remember, that's the giveaway and Jagola chat to auto met your social media so that you can save a lot of precious time. You can let your social media keep doing their work even you're asleep. Okay. Remember, every Wednesday at 15 p.m. Go Digital Live series. Okay. So far, I've been shared about what is user experience and for those who totally have no idea or you actually have different understanding towards user experience, I hope my sharing actually clearly may give you a much more clearer picture and give you the clarity as well. So if you want to explore more about user experience as well as ask more questions, you can feel free to actually come approach me in all my social media from LinkedIn to Instagram to Facebook page, or you can actually eventually um, engage me personally in my, my personal social media account as well. So my name is Jay Chong and thank you so much for watching and staying with me so far. And if possible, allow me to ask you a favor by put a like to this video as well as subscribe to my channel and put a ring so that you get notified whenever I upload tutorial video which is scheduled at least every Sunday at 15 p.m. and go live every Wednesday at 15 p.m. Thank you so much for watching Technology Simplicity YouTube channel. My name is Jenny Chung signing off and wishing everyone stay home stay safe. See you again next week. Goodbye.